but God will bring his family into your life, you know, because the Bible talks about, the Bible talks about, you know, where God will replace mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and this kind of thing, you know. And what I think, and what I, I really believe that people don't understand, I'll be honest with y'all, it's frustrating to me to where, to where. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're live. I don't know if she knows we're live or not, but she's going to find out when she get back <laughs> or when she plays the tape. But, but what, I, what frustrates me, though, is people, you know, who claim to be saved, it's not, it's almost like it's a struggle for them to just honestly and absolutely and totally accept the fact that my life belongs to the Lord. That's right. My life is to do God's will. Yes. My life is to, uh, 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 to live by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. Yes. My life is no longer Man. the life that I used to live. And stuff. I am totally separated unto God for holy purposes as his son, as his daughter. And it's like people cannot let go of other things that have these uh, tentacles attached to them and stuff. Because when we come to the Lord, it's all or nothing. Yes. Jesus said, if you commit a sin, he says, you know, if you commit one sin, rather, he says, you may as well commit them all. See? And what he's trying to trying to show us is how one sin can affect the entirety of your life. That's right. If you don't repent of it. True. That's what he's trying to tell you and stuff. And see, we don't see sin as being that deadly and that costly in our relationship with God. Because if people did, they would stop sinning. Right. See? Right. Because when you say that you're saved, when you say that you're born again, you're saying that God has given me. His power, His authority, His love, His Son is my Savior and as my example. And so, you know, there's no reason for me to even think about sin right. and stuff. And if you really want to obey the Word of God, see, the Bible says sin shall not lord over you. True. Yes. And you know why it's hard for most people to believe that? It's because they have not really accepted and believed the whole truth of God. Right. See? Right. That's why they can't do that, see? Until the word of God becomes your life. In other words, becomes how you live, what you do, what you say, you know? And, and really, that is going to be determined by your obedience to God, right. see? And, 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 and meaning that if he said it, I believe it, you know? And if he said it, I'm going to do it. Right. And see, and if there's no understanding that... This is what, whatever God is telling me is going to be good for me. Whatever God is telling me, it is going to help grow me in some area or in some way in my life. See? Right. But the thing is, is that we as his children, we have to be determined by the spirit of God to not only want everything that God has, but to have that same uh, desire and hunger to do it. Right. See? That's that's the big thing, to do it and stuff. And, 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 and most people are not wanting to do that, see? The thing about people in the church is that the people in the church, they call themselves the, the children of God, of God's sons, of God's daughters and stuff. But they have failed to realize the cost of being a son of God. Right. Or being a daughter of God. That means total separation from anything that is of the world, anything that is of the flesh, Anything that is carnal, that is not spiritual, you know, in light of who Jesus is and stuff, see? And so, and so when we can ever get it settled, and I mean settled in our hearts, that, man, I got to live the way God wants to do it. Well, I rephrase that. Man, I want to live the way God wants me to live. Right, see? Yeah. Right. Your life, your life, you have to become who God created you to be. And you would never know, nobody never knows how they were or, and what they were created to be until they repent. Right. Mm -hmm. When you repent, then now's the opportunity for God to use you and to uh, do things in your life that will cause you or encourage you or strengthen you 
to become that person that God created you to become. See, God didn't create you or Jesus didn't die on the cross just so that you would continue to walk a confused life, True. a weak life, yeah. a life that is uh, up and down, a life that is wavering and stuff. You know, he didn't save us for that. You know, he saved us to be like him because in truth, we are all being discipled by Jesus yes. yeah. through his word and by his spirit. See, it isn't me that is molding you and shaping you or nothing like that. That is not me. I'm not doing that. I'm telling you what God says from his word and by the revelation of his spirit, what you need to do to become that person that God wants you to be. He's the one who orchestrates that. He is the right. one who feeds that. He is the one who directs that, you know, and stuff. You know, because, you know, who orchestrated the apostles and, or the disciples? Who orchestrated how they lived? Who orchestrated or revealed to them or showed them by example what they ought to do? You know, the life that they ought to be living, see? Because the thing was, they followed Jesus. Right. Their eyes was only on him. They, 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 they committed in their heart that they were going to do God's will and nobody else's, see? And the thing is, is that that's what we're supposed to be doing too. We're being discipled unto the Lord. That's right. Part of my responsibility as a pastor is through the scriptures and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you know, I'm to help you, you know, and, and show you what God says this is what you need to do right. in order, you know, to yeah. be able to live the life that I want you to live, see? Yeah. And, and, and you know, y'all hear me talking a lot about uh, fringe stuff or stuff that distracts, see? Yeah. And until there's a complete separation from the world in terms of the, the sin and the influence of the world in some degree that affects your walk with God and stuff, until there's total separation, you'll never ever be truly set free from your sins. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. See, because when you are thinking on this thing over here where God has already settled it, you know, God says, I will give you, for instance, God says, I will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Okay? And so you say, you know, yeah, I believe God will give me peace about all understanding, but ring, 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 ring. Hey, I'm just thinking about this scripture, you know, about God giving me peace. Well, I can't quite get that. What do you think about that? See, did God ever tell you to get a second opinion? No. no. About anything in your life? No. You know, he didn't tell us to get a second opinion about something. No. If God says, you know, that I will give you peace, then God will give you peace. Amen. True. The thing is, is that you've Amen. got to accept it and you've got to have faith to believe that he will do what he said he will do. Amen. See? Right. You know, my foot was so bad last Sunday, I couldn't even put my shoes on. Mm -hmm. I tried to pull my shoes on, I couldn't get them on because they were so sore. You know, and I mean really hurting. Yeah. And so I wore some different, I didn't wear shoes. <laughs> I wore my house shoes. <laughs> it was hurting so bad. I tried to pull my shoe up over my foot, man. I, I, and as soon as I, uh -uh, I can't do that, you know. And so, you know, and so I had prayed and then Ken and them prayed for us. Pray for me. Y'all all pray for me. And uh, and anointed me with oil and stuff. And, and when y'all prayed, you know, I received the prayer. I believed that God was going to heal me and stuff. And I'm not lying. So I'm walking around because, you know, I think about on the Lord a lot, you know, whenever I'm just doing anything. Yeah. And, uh, and so remember the 10 lepers? Mm -hmm. that Jesus healed and they all went and and they 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 there was no real no manifestation of the healing but they believed yeah, God they they and they healed. left mm -hmm. and then and they were healed as they went but then the one guy came back you know and and he was praising praising Jesus and thanking the Lord for healing them and stuff you know and so later on that day later on Sunday the Lord said your healing begin tomorrow I, I heard his voice just as clear as I'm talking to Mary. That's okay. And so, and this no lie, it began on Monday. Amen. And then after Monday, Amen. Tuesday got better, 
Wednesday got better. And then all of a sudden, it was all gone. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, I got shoes on today. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, you know, last Sunday, I wasn't, you know, didn't have shoes on. But, you know, my point is this, is that we have to get to a place to where we're going to believe God no matter what. Yes. Yeah. And the thing that you have to do is you have to eliminate all doubt and all doubters. Right. You don't go seeking information from people that you know don't believe like you do. Right. right. See, right. that don't make a whole lot of sense. Right. See, yeah. all you do, that's just like going to going to that person, like going to the devil. Say, hey, Satan, <laughs> would you lay hands on me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that a person that is not born of the Spirit of God they don't only have a different spirit, they have a different father. Amen. Right. See? Amen. Because Jesus says in John 8 44, he says, you will do as your father does. Right. The lust of your father you will do. And then right before he told him that, he said, oh, by the way, you are over the father of the devil. See? Mm -hmm. There are people whose father is the devil. That's right. true. See? Yeah. And they are not like true. you. And not only that, they don't even like you, see? Yep. Because the minute you start standing up on that box and start glorifying God and sharing with, sharing with them about Jesus and stuff, you'll find out real quick how they, what they think about you, oh, yeah. see? Oh, yeah. And whereas with another believer, that is a common thing, you know, yes. yep. to preach Jesus, to share Jesus, see? And like I said last week, you know, if you cannot have a shout, about loving God and knowing God because of all that he's done Amen. for you. Amen. You are a sick puppy. Amen. Yes. See? Yes. Why is it we love so many other things than we love God? Mm. Huh? Why do we love other things more than we love God? Why is it we don't trust God as God trusts us when we right. have faith in him and right. stuff? See? Think about it. When God asks you to do something, he trusts in you. That's right. He's trusting you to do that. Go and witness to so-and-so and so. Go over there and help so-and-so and so out and whatever, see? And it doesn't matter what it is. As long as you understand and know God told you to do that, right. Right. you know, and, and it's like it's no different than Abraham was. Right. Mm -hmm. Abraham was a man of true faith. Mm -hmm. Right. The father of faith is what the Bible calls yes. him, see? And you know why? God could tell Abraham they could be having a war down the street. And God said, okay, Abraham, I need you to, to go down that street and just keep walking and stuff. And he said, I'll let you know later on where you need to go. Abraham got on his donkey, you know, got his family together, got his stuff together, and just left. Mm -hmm. See? Just left. Didn't even think about it. Right. See? We live in a world and in a society now to where at this very moment in our society, the devil is in control. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The devil is in control. Yeah. From your federal government all the way down to your city government. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The devil is in control. That's right. yeah. And the reason you say that, the reason I say that is, in Noah's day, turn to Matthew chapter, I mean, Luke chapter 17. Chapter 17. And we've looked at this scripture quite a bit in the last few months because it's relevant to what's going on right now. Right. And so in uh in Luke 17, I guess it seems like everybody got there before me. Okay, in Luke 17, it's funny, I already have my divider there and I'm still flipping pages. In Luke 17, verse 26. And this is Jesus, this is Jesus talking. And I really want to go back to verse 20 and we'll read on from there. It says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, nor behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's what, it says, neither shall they say, low low here or low there for behold the kingdom of god is within you mm -hmm. see jesus said the kingdom of god is within you 
Right. See, that's what he said. Right. See, everything that you got, and you know why that is? Yo, his spirit is if the spirit of God is living in you, the kingdom is living right. in you. Amen. Yes. See, true. Amen. Because he Amen. said, everything that the Father has shown, everything that is of the Father, right. the Father has given it to me, and the Father has shown it to me. Mm -hmm. And stuff. See? So he says, I've got everything that the Father has. That's how much God trusted Jesus. Yeah. See? Right. Yeah. And Jesus trusts us just as much mm -hmm. if we demonstrate that kind of faith. Yeah. And that kind of trust. See, mm -hmm. our faith grows and our faith is demonstrated and our faith is revealed by the things that we suffer. Mm -hmm. right. Persecutions, trials, tribulations, you know, being hated, being ridiculed, being reviled. Those kinds of things will help your faith build because those things happen for a reason. Right. Number one, Jesus said you're going to experience those. Right. Number two, he says, you're going to be experiencing those. Why? Because of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because of your love for Jesus, you're going to be hated and you're going to be persecuted. Everybody who says they love Jesus, most of them are lying. <laughs> because if they love Jesus, then they will be doing his will. That's they true. will be doing his commandments. Right. Because right. that's what he said. See, right. That's the whole difference in a person that's saved that's and one true. that's not. See, right. Because Jesus said, look, he said, there are those out there. You know, who honor me with their lips. He said, but their hearts far from me. Right. See? Yeah. And all they do is give lip service. Because if, 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 if you love Jesus from your heart, then the things that you say, the things that you do, they're going to glorify Amen. him. And yeah. you're going to know exactly, yeah. you know, what you're talking about. Yeah. And so is the other person. See? Right. Yeah. There is no shame in loving That's the Lord. Right. There is right. no shame in serving God. But there yeah. are people that will tell you, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You know? For yeah. acting like that, yeah. see, and, and yeah. stuff. And, and and I don't know why people, I'm not shocked and I'm not surprised when people say that. Right. And, and the reason is because they don't know God mm -hmm. the way the Bible says that he is, right. see. Right. But I don't know, I only don't know it, I only don't just know him. He lives in me, right. see. Yes. And my life and everything about my life is orchestrated of the Lord, led by the Holy Spirit. True. Right. But if that ain't gonna happen if I ain't got ears to hear. True. See? True. Yeah. You have to put yourself in the position to hear the voice of God. Amen. And how did Jesus say in John chapter 10, his sheep uh, uh, um, understood his voice and knew his voice? Why? They abided in him. Right. Right. They knew him. Right. They spent time with him and right. stuff. See? Right. And people, you know, and people tell you, you crazy? You you sitting there talking to somebody that you can't see? Yeah. Because he's a spirit. Right. Right. Mm hmm. That's okay. You can, God bring it back to your remembrance. We can, if even if it's after the message, that'll be fine. You know, it doesn't matter. You know. I remember it. Yeah, but see, that that's one thing. And another sense, shit back. I remember it. So, um, it's like you're saying, um, people. Act like you're trying to push religion down your throat, and I just felt like I felt like that. I, I feel like I I worry about that, but then I guess that in my mind last night, I don't know if it's the Lord or just thinking. You can't think like that because we just have to share the word with them, right? Yeah, and I mean, if well, they take it, they take it, and if they, they don't, don't, they don't. Well, see, the thing is, is that. Jesus never expected the devil to accept anything he said. Right. And if they're in opposition to you when you're sharing this and when you're living this and stuff, it's, an, it's a tactic of the devil to shut you up. Mm -hmm. Because what does the scripture say? That we're to be what? A witness and a testimony. Mm -hmm. See? Right. And the thing is, is that, you know, you're not like those people, you know, if they're telling you that stuff. And the thing is, is that the life that you're manifesting in the spirit they don't understand that either see they don't understand why they feel funny when they're around you and stuff see when a person is really walking in the lord and doing god's will and really understand you're only being who you truly are That's in right. christ True. you are a child of god right you are supposed to live like a child of god you're supposed to act like a child of god and you're supposed to talk like a child yes. of god yes. see that's right because that's what god's disciples that's what jesus disciples do right remember even when he wasn't around those disciples would go out and what would they do preach the gospel mm -hmm. what would they do mm -hmm. repent and believe the gospel mm -hmm. they didn't preach and say anything any different than what they were taught 
as they were becoming disciples of Jesus. Right. When you're a disciple of someone, as we all are, we're a disciple of Jesus. When you are a disciple of Jesus, you know, the thing is that you are learning everything that you need to know and that you're going to use as his disciple. Because once, when you are his disciple, you are his representative in the earth. Right. See? Right. True. Just as he was. You are his, re his representative and stuff. Yep. And you don't let anybody shame you out of, you know, the mercy and the grace and the love that God has poured out on you and that God has shown you and manifested to you in your relationship with him. See? You know? And see, and that's another thing about becoming confident in who you are. See? And not questioning who you are. If God says that you are more than a conqueror through Christ, then guess you what? Are. You believe that? You are more than a conqueror yeah. through Christ. Yeah. If the Bible tells you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, guess what? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And you don't let anybody tell you anything yes. other than that. Hallelujah. See, And I will tell you, the more that you become more confident and more hungry and more desiring to do God's will and stuff, you ain't got to worry about them people bothering you no more. Because mm -hmm. when they see you coming, they're going to run right. the other way. Right. You know? yeah. You're going to have to pick up the flip-flop and catch them and give it to them. And, stuff. <laughs> see? and it's all because, see, the Spirit of God, you know, is the light of God. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are, Jesus said, we are the light. Right. See, so if we are the light, then light does what? Shine. Right. See, and if the light shines on people, you know, and if they're not saved, you're going to see the black eye, you're going to see the scar, you're going to see all the stuff. God's going to show all of that to them. Mm -hmm. And he may even reveal to you in your heart something you need to know about that person that you're dealing with. Not so you can gossip, not so you can run them down or any of that. So that you can use what God is showing you to minister to that person. Right. See, you know, we never purposely want to shame anybody. That's right. Yes. But we definitely never ever want to compromise either. Right. True. Right. We don't want to compromise. See, yeah. we stand our ground because, you know, this is who I am. See, this is the thing about the children of the devil. This is what they like. They like it when you question who you are. That's right. Mm -hmm. They like it when right. you, you know, you kind of like get afraid or, or feel shame for who you are. Mm -hmm. See, look, your head ought to be so above, above the clouds because of who you are in Jesus. Yes. And I'm not talking right. about in the prideful yes. way. Right. I am so thankful yes. that my Lord Amen. did this for me. Yes. See, yes. when you're truly thankful there, you'll be surprised the things that the Holy Spirit will manifest through you in order to show your appreciation right. and your thankfulness to God for what he did for you. Right. See? Right. And that's what you have to remember. It is not about what they say. It's about what he said. See, Amen. And not only about what he said, but what he has done. See, Amen. You know the differences. All of us know the differences that God has made in our lives Amen. to not only make us better people, but also to draw us closer to his bosom. You know, Amen. God is our Father. He likes hugging on us every once in a while. You know, He likes spending time with us every once in a while. Jesus talked to His Father all the time. Yep. See, yes. what I hear my Father do, that's what I do. What I hear my Father say, that's what I say. See, and so Jesus' whole life was totally based on whatever it was that He received from His Father. Amen. He said to Himself, I can do nothing of myself. Right. I can do nothing of myself. So what does he say? You know, if it wasn't for my father, I could do nothing. It's true. And we ought to be the same way. If it wasn't for Jesus, I can do nothing. That's right. Right. And without right. him, I can do nothing. And that's the way we ought to be feeling. See? When we surrender to God's will and we surrender to his authority, there should be nothing that we don't believe or we don't trust that God can do in our lives. Right. Start, you know, and, and the thing is that is that we have so much to be thankful for, so much to be thankful. Yes. And but we allow other people to cloud that 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 picture or that vision of what we need to be thankful for. When the Bible talks about you know meditating on the word day and night, mm -hmm. think on things above and not things on this earth. True. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. See? Amen. People 
that do not have a relationship with God, you know what? They don't want one. And not only that, they don't need one in their mind. I don't need Jesus. We don't need Jesus. You know? When the Bible talks about all of these false Christs and false prophets and false preachers and false teachers and all of these false people or whatever, they don't want nothing to do with God. Why do you think they're preaching, uh, preaching a false doctrine or teaching a false doctrine? Because they don't, want to treat, they don't want to preach the real way. They don't want nothing to do with the truth. Right. Because if it was the truth that they wanted to preach, there are no locks on the word of God. That's right. right. You know, it is not the only, it ain't but just one book. This book is everywhere. Right. Everywhere, right. see. Right. And if a person really wanted to know the truth, they shouldn't have any trouble finding the truth somewhere. You may even find it in a uh, Walmart. See? Yeah. Yeah. They even carry Bibles and stuff. Yeah. It's all about what you want, and what you want will be determined by what kind of relationship you have with That's the Lord. Yeah. That will decide your true. want. Decide your want, rather. If you love Jesus, you can't get enough of it. That's right. right. If you have a nominal relation with Jesus, a nominal relationship with Jesus, well, you can put up with him sometimes, you know. But when you love the Lord, there is no one else on planet Earth that you would much rather have a relationship with once you get to know him than Jesus. See? Amen. Than right. Jesus. And the thing about having that relationship with Jesus, it makes everything else and everybody else in your life you know, so much more important to the point that they become so important to you, you want to pour out the love and the joy and the peace Amen. of God on those people Amen. because you want them to actually see that the Lord is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, Amen. that's what you want Amen. to see. See, yes. and that's what you want them to see. Yes. And stuff. So, yes. uh-uh. You know, most people, you know, when... When they attend a church or whatever, and most people take on the persona of the pastor, and I've been in every, I've been in churches that way, and I was like that myself. And when I say persona, I'm not talking about being like him. I'm talking about you know there's such a understanding and a love for the scripture and a love for God or whatever that God gives you that understanding. You know that this is what I want you to be. I want you to be serious about the, about you know who you are in me and stuff. See, and 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 what a lot of people don't understand sometimes is our pastors aren't the same. Right. True. Yeah. You know we're not the same. You know, and I've had people to tell me when they left this one church, they were looking for a church with a pastor just like the one that they had. See, I'm serious. But they were. They left because they didn't like it. No, no, the church split. And so they went and looked for them another pastor, but they wanted a pastor like the one that they had, see? And what happens is, what that is saying in volumes is, I don't want to follow Jesus. I want to follow that man. And that shows you who they had their eyes on. Right. Yeah, that's true. The whole time. Showed you who they had their eyes on, see? The thing was, you know, when we left out of there and stuff, you know, we weren't doggone looking for nobody. We were looking for the truth. That's all we wanted was the truth. I didn't care what the preacher looked like. He could look like, uh, uh, what was that big old fat guy on uh, Star Wars? <laughs> Java. Java. <laughs> okay, it looked like Java, but if Java preaching the truth and preaching the gospel and stuff, and he living the gospel, I don't care what he looks like. Because, like, you know, it's amazing that people will chance their salvation based on who the preacher is. That's right. Whether they like him or not. Right. Well, you know, he's preaching the gospel, but, you know, he's a little bit too much over the top. See? You know, too bad that he didn't get to hear Jesus preach in person. Right. See? Right. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes they do get to hear, hear Jesus preach in person through somebody else. See? Because the thing about a pastor and a preacher and a teacher or whatever, our example is Jesus. You know, when people say, well, you know, you need to have a covering or whatever. And I'm thinking, covering? What are you talking about, covering? My covering is the Lord, see? Amen. They so much want you to put faith in a man, they will say, well, you know, that's your mentor. I said, no, he ain't. 
I said, ain't no man my mentor. I said, I'm looking to Jesus. Yeah. I am so thankful that when we got saved, we didn't have mentors. Right. Our only mentor was the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah. He was the only somebody Amen. that ministered to us was the Holy Spirit. Right. We didn't have a clue about who he was, but we know, but we knew when he was talking to us. Yes. Yeah. Because every time he tell you to do something, you could trail it right back to the Bible. Right. Right. See, right. you can confirm it through the scriptures right. and stuff. And so because there were questions after I got saved about certain things that I had habits I had if I could do them anymore. And I'm not lying. I'm walking down the hall thinking about that. I'm wondering if I could do that. And the Holy Spirit just a little still a uh, uh, small voice said no. That's all I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. See, when they said no, that settled it for me. Amen. And it's like Amen. I've said many times before. When I can, when I can confirm something in the Bible, by the Bible and stuff, even if it's written in the Bible, that settles it for me. I don't want anybody's opinion. I don't want to hear what you think about it because God has already told me the truth about it, so I don't want to hear what you got to say about it. See? Right. So you're yeah. trying to exalt yourself above God because you think that you can add a cherry on top of what he's already said, but you can't add nothing to what God says right. or what God has done. Right. God doesn't need our help, no. right. you, know, you know, writing the Bible. Right. Or interpreting the Bible. Right. You know, and not only that, he warns us in, in Revelation about adding to it right. and taking away right. from it the curses and your name could be blotted out the Lamb's book of life. Right. Yeah. And not only that, you know, your name will be blotted out the Lamb's book of life. And not only that, the Bible also says, I think it's in Peter, that the word of God is not subject to any man's interpretation. private right. interpretation. Right. Right. See? And so many people get on Facebook looking for private interpretations and stuff. Yep. Because they don't have enough faith and they don't have enough love for God to just trust what he said in that Bible right. and believe it and do it. Right. See? Amen. That's so right. They just don't do that. See? Mm -hmm. I thank God, as I said, that I didn't have mentors. Because growing up in faith, growing up as a believer, I was taught, Mary was taught by the Holy Spirit. Yes. We were taught by the Holy Spirit. See? And yeah, we made mistakes just like everybody else. But the Holy Spirit would show us that mistake, reveal that mistake after we made it, you know, and tell us why we shouldn't do it again. Right. See? Right. But he didn't have to tell us how to do it again. I mean, uh, why we shouldn't do it again. We knew why we didn't do it again because it didn't line up with God's right. word. Right. It wasn't bringing glory to God right. and stuff. So we knew that it wasn't of God and stuff. Right. So the thing is, is that there's nothing that we should be looking for you know, and no one we should be looking for to help us to understand the Bible. What do you think God gave you the Holy Spirit for? Believe God in huh? all truth. I, I don't understand that. He gives you the Holy Spirit and He tells you He's going to reveal all things to you, but not only that, He will what? Lead you, teach you, and guide you into what? All truth. So there's nothing missing that God didn't give you that would not enable you to fully understand this Bible and how to live this Bible yes, right. and how to understand this Bible. Yes. That's the Holy Spirit's responsibility. That's why Jesus sent it. Right. One of the right. main reasons right. why he sent it. Right. So that you would not depend on man, right. you know, to help you interpret the Bible. Right. Right. Psalm 118 says, put no confidence in man. In man. That's right. No confidence in man. It also says you need <coughs> no man to teach you to. Yeah, I mean, and, and so the thing is, is that, and I've said this many times, how people have minimized the ministry and the importance of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Right. The Bible even says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Right. So if he's the spirit of truth, <coughs> and he's perfectly the spirit of truth, why would you need to go talking to somebody else about something that you want to find out in the Bible? I'm not lying. I don't do that. I really don't do it. And I'm not telling you not to go listen to other people. And I'm not saying that. See? If you want to go listen to somebody, you better make sure they're telling you the truth. Right. Sorry, sorry. You don't go listen to some Tom, Dick, and Harry, and all they do is jumping up around the stage, and everybody's running through the, through the aisles and all of this, sliding head first down to the altar and all of this. Doing all this stupid stuff. <coughs> I've seen people do crazy stuff like that. Oh yeah. I mean, they made they, they made church to appear like it was some kind of amusement park. 
Right. I mean, really. Ken, will you pull a little Johnny album up underneath the keys? <laughs> Boy, get out that sham lyric, man. Yeah, that's right. You know, see, they, they make church everything that it shouldn't be. Right. Yeah. When we're in the house of God, everything ought to be about God. Right. Everything ought to be about lifting up the name of Jesus, right. teaching the gospel, preaching the gospel, you know, revealing, you know, things that the Holy Spirit wants to expand or expound on that you heard in Scripture right. and stuff. Amen. It, it should not be a doggone turkey shoot or something. We've had people we've said on the past that drove a motorcycle up into the doggone church. Had a doggone uh, a bullseye and arrows and a bow and arrow in the church. See? Had guns in the church. See? All for some kind of visual demonstration. They call it something else. I can't remember what it was. I call it stupid. Stupid. That's stupid. That, Jesus didn't have no illustrated sermons. Jesus didn't even have these Bam and all this old stuff, uh, human video and all of that stuff, see? And you know what they're doing with all of that stuff? It is nothing to do with the Word of God. It is entertainment, and I don't care what they call it, see? Because it's too much like the world. Jesus never told those disciples, okay, I want y'all to get over here and practice this skit, you know, and then you're going to perform it when you get over here, and, uh, when you get to Samaria. I want you to perform it. Now, when y'all think y'all got it together, y'all come and let me know, and I'll let y'all know whether, you know, uh, we can do it or not and stuff. All of that stuff is called, uh, causes in church is stupid. It causes hurt feeling. Well, my child didn't get to do the human video. See? Yeah, well, we were doing a video about the, about the frog and not the lizard, because that's what they look like. See? So we wanted somebody that could play the right, right part, and your child didn't qualify. See? You, see, un honestly, yeah. when you start doing things in church outside of Scripture, yeah. what do you think, what are you going to expect? If nobody is growing in the Spirit, if nobody's being fed in the Spirit, if nobody's being led by the Spirit, you ain't doing nothing but doing a whole bunch of fleshy junk that God, you know, let, didn't even look, bother to look at it. Right. See? Because it has nothing to do with truth. It has nothing to do with your growth and your faith in God. Amen. See? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, my father's house should be a house of worship. So, not a doggone house used for an amusement park or selling chicken plates and barbecue plates. That's See? Right. See? Sure. Raffling tickets and auctioning stuff out Amen. and all this foolish, Amen. stupid stuff. See? And I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what people, what, what people say. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing right. the word of God. Yes. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Right. How in the heck can you grow in faith when they are when they're auctioning off a doggone bozo outfit? <laughs> and the reason they're auctioning off a bozo outfit is because that crap that you preaching in church, everybody's a clown. <laughs> It ain't helping anybody. That's See? Right. Right. You're not helping anybody to grow by doing stupid stuff like that. And it tells you a lot about the heart of a pastor as well. See? I said this before and I'm going to say it again and I'm going to keep saying it. If a pastor is not preaching the whole truth to the people that God entrusted him to, he don't love you. Right. That's, true. Right. That's true. He doesn't love you. That's so true. true. Because you need to understand that if you don't repent of your sin, if you don't surrender your life to Jesus and live that life unto God, you know, until the day that you die, you are going to hell. Amen. And if the preaching of the gospel is not being taught or whatever, you don't understand the importance of what it means to not only know the gospel, but to live the gospel. Right. Right. Sure. See, there's an effect that takes place on your life when you refuse to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Right. And when a pastor is not preaching the truth, then he's not helping you at all. That's right. That's right. And I'm not saying when he's preaching the truth, you know, you ain't got to agree with everything, but if it's coming out of that Bible, you better be agreeing with God. Yes. You don't have Amen. to agree with him, but you better be agreeing with what God Amen. is saying and stuff, see? Amen. And if he's any kind of man called by God, he's going to be telling you what God said. Right. See? And what God said only. 
He's not going to be enticing you, you know, and tricking you in to get you in church because we're going to raffle off a couple of TVs on Mother's Day today. See? Yeah. We're going to raffle off a TV. Everybody going, yo, it's Mother's Day. You're going to get a gift. See? And as I was sharing with y'all earlier, what a big joke that is. Yeah. See? A guy done beat his mama with a baseball bat for the last two weeks, and now all of a sudden he <laughs> wants to buy her a dozen roses. And say, hey, mom, happy Mother's Day. If I was that mother, I would have had my hand behind my back with the Louisville slugger. Soon as he give me them things, I say, hey, I got something for you to thank you. Boom. See? Amen. I love that. <laughs> Just teasing y'all. But, but the thing is that they come up with all of these days, but they make them all a farce. Right. Because the things that they're saying you sh you're celebrating, you should be celebrating your mother, your father, or whatever. You ought to be doing that all the time anyway. Right. See? right. And why does somebody have to tell you and set aside a day? So that you can do something that you ought to be doing all the time. Right. That's right. Amen. Don't make no sense to this old boy. Right. See? Amen. If you love your mother, you're going to love your mother every day of the week, as I right. said earlier. Yeah, See? Right. And you're going to make sure you be looking out for your mother or for your father even. Yeah. And stuff. Right. Sure. See? As opposed to letting somebody tell you, okay, it's Mother's Day, so now you got to lie, you got to steal, you got to uh, steal, you got to cheat now. See? Now, going up there, you know, we know how you really are, but. Make it look good. See? Yeah, yeah. You know, make it look good. Make it appear that you love your mother. See? Everybody and their grandmama know you don't love your mother because right. you ain't done anything in the last 20 years to demonstrate that you love your mother. Right. See? Yeah. Sure. And the most important thing, God knows you don't love. Sure. See? And God said, look at that big liar. Of them big liars <laughs> and stuff. Look, now I'm going to tell you, God calls you what you are. Yeah. 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 You know, if you are a devil, he's going to call you a devil. That's right. If you're a hypocrite, God will call you a hypocrite. Right. He has no problem with that. Oh, yeah. See? But what happens when people get away from the truth, then they can form their own truth. They can create their own truth and what they think it is. See? Right. Yeah. And we're going to look at something in a minute. And But, <clears throat> you know, I thought I'd take a trip up by New York before we finally get to <laughs> Luke right. chapter 17. <laughs> See, I figured, I figured we'd check out New York and I, figured, and I realized I need to get out of there real quick. So, so in Matthew, I mean in Luke 17, and it says, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they, verse 21, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That's what we, when we went to New York. <clears throat> and it says in verse 22, And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, see here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. Right. Because he just told you that that's what they were going to be doing. Mm -hmm. He said, don't go there, see. That's why, you know, just because they say, oh, well, you know, man, God is, God is really, really manifesting over here. You know, he said, don't go there, see. Mm -hmm. Because everything that you need, you don't have to go anywhere to get it. Right. Have faith in God. Right. See? Right. And right. God will supply all your need and God will minister to you what he wants you to know. See, right. Right. Because, again, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Right. It says his Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, you know, the comforter, you know, he will minister to you and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because God doesn't want your dependency on man whatsoever. Right. Right. See, right. If that were the case, he would have used a man, mm -hmm. you know, and not called Jesus down from heaven. See, right. But he sent him. Right. He's the only somebody that we look to. Right. Verse 25. 24. 24, I'm sorry. For as the lightning that lighteth out of one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his Amen. day. Mm. But first, right. but first must be suffering, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. That's and I true. want you to keep in mind. That's true. Now, Jesus said. The things that they did to me, they're going to do to you as right. well. Mm -hmm. He said, they hated me, and they they're going to hate you. Right. You know, some, he said, are going to even be murdered or killed, and they think that they're doing God a favor. Mm -hmm. When I think, read that, think of that scripture, I think about Paul, mm -hmm. the apostle. You know, he thought that before he got saved, 
that he was doing God's will and mm -hmm. stuff. And then he realized later on after he got saved, he said, I was ignorant. I didn't know mm -hmm. and stuff. And that's where a lot of people are. They're what? ignorant and they just oh, don't really God. know and stuff. But yet they still run around here acting as if they do know. See, the thing is, is when you seek first to God, first God's kingdom, then God will show you these things. Yeah. See, this is the, understand something. There is nothing about the kingdom that God is trying to hide from any of us. Right. Absolutely right. nothing. He says the only reason that you don't have what you think that you can't get is because you hadn't asked for it. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. You ask for it according to the will of God. And God said, I will do it. See? Just like when he healed my foot. You know, he told me what was going to happen. And I believed what he said. And then I just forgot about it. And it happened. Amen. See? Amen. Amen. You know, and it ain't the first time that God has done something like that for right. me or for Mary right. and stuff. You know, the thing is that nobody who receives answers to prayer from God is more special than anybody else in the kingdom. Right. 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 You know, nobody's special. It's all about having faith. It's all about trusting God. It's all about believing what he said mm -hmm. and believing that he will do it. See, and understanding also God does not lie. He cannot lie. See, so everything God says is true. Amen. And if you know and accept that it's true, once you receive it, then you just settle in on it. Right. So, you right. let you abide in the word and you let the word abide in you. See? And so in verse 26, he said, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Mm -hmm. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, the thing about the uh, in uh, in Noah's day, think about it in Noah's day. Now, in Noah's day, everything, uh, everybody in Noah's day was what evil. Mm -hmm. yep. The Bible said every thought of in the, of the imagination was evil. Continually. Today. So think about this. Now, now this is what Jesus said. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be now. Mm -hmm. We know he's coming back. Right. See? Right. Yeah. We know the Lord is coming back. And so Jesus said, This is the stuff that's going to be going on. Think about it in Noah's day. There was not one person had a relationship with God other than Noah. Right. Everybody else on the whole planet mm -hmm. was evil. Is what the Bible said. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to have anything to do with God. There was no mention of anybody, you know, doing Noah's day that had anything to do with God. <laughs> you don't even read in there where Noah even talked to anybody about God or witnessed to anybody about God. But he was preaching the gospel as he was building the ark, right. like God right. told him, see. Because right. Peter said he was a preacher of righteousness right. and stuff. Yeah. See? Now think about it. Nobody, everybody on that day when the flood came, everybody on the planet died and went to hell yeah. except for Noah and his family. Right. Now think about that. See, it tells you two things that man had gotten so evil that they had no conscience for anything about God, period. Right. See? Because if there were some that were convicted or some that were, were, were curious or whatever, God would have told us about it. Right. You know, in their interactions with Noah. But no, I guarantee you, they were not going over to Noah talking about, hey man, you know, what do I need to do to make sure that I get on this thing you're building or whatever? Because they didn't know what it was. Right. You know, you didn't hear anybody talking about that. Yeah. See, when a person is so evil, the Bible talks about how the devil has blinded their mind. Yeah. See, yeah. the devil, when people give ear and give attention to the devil, the devil can blind your mind so much 
that you don't have ears to hear what the Spirit is right. saying. You don't have the ability to understand what the Spirit is saying. Because God gives us the example in the 8th chapter of John when Jesus said those guys could hear him, could understand him, didn't know him. And not only that, he said, you can't go where I'm going. I'm going above. He said, but y'all from beneath and stuff. And then later on in that same chapter, as I quoted earlier, he told them, he said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. Their minds were so focused and so committed to their sin, you know, and to their self-righteousness and to their pride and stuff, they couldn't hear anything that he had to say. Right. Right. <clears throat> because Jesus said, what? They can't hear me. Right. You can talk to people, some people about the gospel all day long, mm -hmm. you know, and they're sitting around. Let me say, shut up. Uh oh I got coffee all over me. They said, they said, I wish that they, I wish that he would shut up and stuff. <clears throat> Nothing like coffee washed hands. Uh, no, I'm good. <clears throat> and so, and so the thing was is that, you know, when Jesus says whatever you give uh, attention to, that's what you're the servant of. Right. Mm -hmm. See, the devil's chief responsibility in his own mind is to lie to you and to deceive you. Right. And Jesus said the devil is the father of what? Lies. Yes. When they tell you, you know, well, you shouldn't be acting like that. You shouldn't be. That's the devil talking. Mm -hmm. See, there is no way God is going to chastise you for obeying him. Right. There's no way he's going to do that. He's not going to chastise you for that, for doing what he told you to do. That makes God a liar and a hypocrite, right. if that were the case. But it's not. It's not, see. And so, and so but those people in, in, the day, in the days of Noah, they didn't want to have anything to do with God. The only thing they thought about was evil all day long. That's right. Can you imagine what was going on with all that evil and stuff? And by just simply looking at the drop in the bucket of it that we're seeing now? Think about how bad it was. Think about the fact that, you know, there was no hope for those people. Because I can assure you God had given them over to whatever sin or lust that they were living in. See, he gave them over to it. And he gave them over to it so that they would be damned. And we'll see that in 2 Thessalonians in a minute. But the thing was is that in those days, everything was evil. And, uh, <clears throat> and Jesus said that they were doing what everybody else does every single day, going on about their regular business. Nobody was interested in why this guy was building this thing over there. Nobody cared about what he was building until it was built and until the flood came. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens to a lot of people. They've been witness to about the Lord all their lives. They've been shared lovingly about repenting of their sin, you know, and, and Jesus forgiving them of their sin and cleansing them from their sin and from all unrighteousness, you know, and helping them and showing them what they need to do to become a child of God and, and not just to escape hell, but to spend eternity with the Father. Right. See, right. you know, and, and, but yet they didn't want to hear that no. because they had settled in the mindset and the heart set that I don't need to hear any of that. I don't need any of that. And that's what people said during Noah's day. See? And as a re result, God restored the whole world. Yes. And then redid it. Mm-hmm. It stopped. See? Because he had to do some redo when the, when the, when the waters covered everything mm -hmm. on the earth. See? And yet he, he destroyed that. See, people think that God does not hate sin, but he does. Mm -hmm. He does. See? And, and and sin, regardless of what it is and who's committing it, there's going to be some punishment for that mm -hmm. from God. See? Yeah. When you think about the fifth chapter of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira, mm -hmm. God killed both of them because they lied to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. See? And you don't tell me God don't hate sin? Because I guarantee you, if it was some of us, you know, and they say, well, you know, we told a little bit. You say, oh, well, everybody does it. It's okay. Uh-uh. Yeah. See, yeah. God has a standard of holiness that he's not compromising. Yes. He's not going to compromise that for anybody. Oh. See, oh, yeah. 
we all are going to have to live by every word of God. Mm -hmm. And we all are going to have to understand that there is justice and judgment coming from God. See, you sin against God. Jesus said, you're going to go to hell and you're going to be in a place where there's weeping, wailing, and national of teeth. See? But now they don't want to know that side of God. They want to know that God that's going to placate your sin and just usher you into hell in a little sweet way. That's not God. God is so loving, he will warn you. That's right. He's not going to usher you into hell without warning you right. and giving you an opportunity to escape hell. Right. See, right. That's the God that I know. See? Right. But he ain't going to treat you any different than he does anybody else. Right. You keep yeah. turning him down, you keep rejecting him or whatever, that's exactly what he's going to do to you. And when you call, he ain't answering. Right. He's not going to answer. We'll look at that in a minute, hopefully. In, um, and so in, in Noah's day, as I said, everything was evil. Then when you look at Lot and in his day, you know, in Lot's day, in Ezekiel 16, 49 and 50, it says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and the needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. Mm. God thought it was a good thing to take them out. Right. See? Right. Because of their sin. Right. See? See, people don't realize how God looks at sin. God is holy. Yes. Sin could not stand in the presence of God. Yes. It could not. And not only that, you know, God wouldn't allow it. Yes. That's why when Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 7, when he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out devils in your name and done many mighty works in your name? Okay, these were people who were claiming to be saved, who were claiming to have the power to heal and this kind of stuff, because that's what they were doing. But the Bible also talks about, you know, the devil, you know, uh, when this uh, can't think, when this guy comes back and he's going to do all of these signs and lying wonders. Antichrist. The Antichrist. All these lying wonders and stuff. So, you know, they can do miracles or whatever, but every miracle, every healing is not of God. Right. Yeah. Because he said, this guy can do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so you have people performing this stuff. And so they want to throw that up to Jesus. Well, we did all of this in your name, did all that in your name. They didn't even know who Jesus was. <laughs> because they knew, you know, if they had known him, they would have known your works don't mean nothing. Right. The things you did don't mean anything That's because really you really never repented of your sin. You lied and deceived yourself that you were all right because you listened to Jack Leg over here stuff telling you that you didn't have to repent and you didn't have to get saved and all of that. You didn't have to really live for God. Just do it for good service, service and things and God is going to pat you on the back and usher you in heaven. They lied to him. Yeah. See? And as a result, they lie to him. They spend eternity in hell. And what's even worse than that? You running up to Jesus acting like, you know, he's supposed to know you. And then when you get through with your little spill, he looks straight eyes at you and say, I never knew you. Mm. See, people are going to think Jesus going to say, well, I never knew you. No, Jesus said, I never knew you. See, it's an offense to God to claim him and to want to take credit for something, you know, that God did. And God said, I don't even know you. See, the thing is, it also should tell you the importance of knowing the Lord. Right. See, because if you know the Lord, then God will speak to you. God will lead you and God will guide you. See, yeah. but if you don't know the Lord, he ain't doing nothing for you. Think about it. He couldn't do nothing for those people. He said, because I don't know you. In John chapter 10, he said, my sheep know me and I know them. And what it tells you that this person that goes up to him and is telling him they've done all of this stuff, it tells you what? While he was on the earth, he didn't know Jesus either. Because he knew, he, if he had known Jesus, he would have known what was required of him to please him. Amen. See? And they would have known the scripture and stuff. But, but, uh, <clears throat> but the thing is that even though 
people know the consequences of their sin, mm -hmm. they do it anyway. Yep. Turn to Romans chapter 1. Verse 18. <clears throat> but first, I want Paul, uh, uh, Paul made a, uh, a statement in verse 16. You know, seem kind of, when I read this, it seems kind of awkward that he throws this in right there. <laughs> he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Amen. Everyone that believeth. Yes. Amen. See, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Verse 18, it says, for the wrath of God. See, the wrath of God. Not that loving, loving, loving God that they just pour a little syrup on it to make you believe that. Oh, that's sweet, Jesus. Ooh, we that sweet Jesus, see? A little too sweet. People like lying. <laughs> I gotta be able, man. <laughs> For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things, first of all, let me go back to verse 18, the latter part of it. He says, they reveal, it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold truth. the truth in unrighteousness. They try to, you know, to, to uh, sugar no, they try to uh, push off, push the, push the truth, I mean, push unrighteousness off on people as if it's the truth, right. you see? That's why you have false Christ and false prophets, false preachers and false teachers, because what they're gonna do, they're not gonna tell you the truth, right. see? They're going to lie to you. They're going to try to make you feel good. And they're going to try to get into your psyche to make sure that they can understand what they need to do and what they need to say in order to keep you. Right. See? Amen. Because it's for personal purposes that these guys lie. Right. It is no advantage to you and no advantage to anybody else other than them. Right. And really you're like a pawn to them being used for their purposes. You know, for whatever reason that they have. You know, whatever things that they're trying to accomplish, they're using you and not telling you the truth. Verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, you know, it Bible said, it didn't say if they knew God, it says when. So they knew God at some point. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain or empty in their imagination, and the foot and their foolish heart was what? Darkened. Darkened. That tells you right there that God can't do anything with that person. Right. If their heart is dark, then they're not of God. That's right. They're of the devil. God is a God of what? Light. Right. But we're talking darkness here. And not only that, he says, he said, be professing themselves to be wise, they became, they became what? Fools. fools. Yes. They became fools, see? And to me, you know, when, when people start messing with God's word and trying to twist it and change it for a personal agenda or whatever and stuff, they are a fool. Mm -hmm. They are a fool because 
any person in their right mind would understand that you can't take something holy and just because you say that you're making it something else, it's that something else. Right. It's not. One thing that you can bank on about the truth, it's never changed. Right. There is nothing that you could ever do to change God's truth. Right. It's always going to be what God said it was, and it's always going to be what God says it is. Right. See? It's never going to, I don't care how you try to tamper with it, how you try to make it say something else, how you try to make it be something else. It's not going to be any of that. It's only going to be what God sent it to right. be and what God right. sent it to do. Right. See? Right. It's never going to change. And you can't, you know, and you can't convince somebody that it, that it is, you know, and, and, and people that do try to allow that stuff to happen, you're a fool for thinking that somebody can do that. Right. That's foolish. I mean, it's foolish to think that somebody can supersede the authority, the power of our Creator and our Father. See? They can't. It'd be stupid. See? Yes. And I know people used to get mad at me when I used to say that in the message a lot of times, when I say something stupid. You know? And my comment would be, well, okay, isn't that word in the dictionary? Mm. Yes. Okay, so if it's in a dictionary, it means that it identifies something or somebody that's stupid. See? I mean, really. It's in the Bible. For, I mean, it's in the, uh, it's in the dictionary for a reason, and God calls him a fool. Mm -hmm. See? Yes. So why don't you get mad at God? He called him a fool. I'm just repeating what he said. Oh. See? I'm just kind of like elevated the, 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 the definition a little bit of a fool. You got that elevation. Yeah. <laughs> a stupid fool. Come on. I mean, but in all seriousness, that, that's crazy. Yes, to think is. that you can take something that's holy and make it be what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. See? That's the, like you trying to that's just like trying to make Jesus be the way you want him to be or to be like you. Mm. That ain't ever gonna happen. No. no. That is never gonna happen. No. That's but they'll true. tell you about this other Jesus now that they that they got going on around here. That's right. So in verse 20, 23 it says, and change the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. They were making their own idols. You missed the whole bunch. Huh? You missed the whole bunch and changed the glory. God into uh, it, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed bees, and creeping things. See? They were making idols to worship. Mm -hmm. Wherefore God also, now listen to, to, you know, like what I tell y'all, just remind you again, that one little word, there's little words in some of these scriptures that you need to highlight in your mind when you read them. It says in verse 24, Wherefore God also gave, gave gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Stuff that they wanted to do. Yep. He gave them up to it. Yep. See? He yep. gave them up. And it wouldn't have mattered whether God gave them up to do it or not. That's what they were going to do anyway. Right. They were going to continue to do it. Yep. But God says, if you want, since you want to spit in my eye, He says, I'm going to just increase the intensity on your lust to do these things that are unclean that you want to do. See? Mm -hmm. Doesn't the Bible say that you have a will to choose mm -hmm. and God will let you have what you want, right. whether good or bad. Right. If you choose bad stuff, God will let you have it and God will turn you over to it. Right. Just yeah. like he did these people right here. See? Right. Yeah. And people go, well, why would God do that? Clown, that's what they wanted to do. That's what they wanted to do. Right. They wanted to do unclean things. They did not want to glorify God, see? Because the Bible says they knew God, but they didn't glorify Him as God, see? Right, right. Because their sin and their lust for their sin superseded any kind of a, a, a commitment that they were going to have to God, which was no commitment. Right. Because they knew that they could not be committed to God in any kind of way and continue to do the things that they were doing. Isn't that something, though? They know what they're doing is not acceptable to God and that we'll read a little bit later on, and that the penalty of what they were doing was hell, death, and damnation. Mm -hmm. But they did it anyway. They did it anyway. See, this is what happens to people 
when they give place to the devil, right. when they allow any little bit of what the devil represents and who the devil is into their life, then the Bible warns, warns, resist the devil, and, he will. and he'll flee. But the Bible also says give zero, no place to the devil. See? All he needed was just a little bit of space, you know, in Eve's time to allow him to get going. Mm -hmm. See? Get that attention, see? And this is the problem with a lot of people and some of us and us at some time. We allow the devil to get a little toenail in our life or whatever. Because we think that certain things sometimes we have to listen to them, we have to look at them, and we have to go find out. And all of those three things, you don't have to do any of that. See? Right. Right. If what you need and what you found in Jesus, it ought to be satisfying to you completely. All of this other stuff are distractions. People who have not made Jesus their Lord, they said they got saved and all this stuff, but if they've not made him their Lord, and by making him their Lord, what I mean by that is, there's no questioning anything that he says or anything that he does. It's just simply accepting what he says, accepting what he's commanded, and do it. Right. See? Right. Yeah. And do it, and then be happy about doing it. Right. And you ought to be uh, happy about doing God's will. Yeah. It pleases God, and it brings joy and peace and, 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 and faith into your life. Right. Because you obeyed what he said, see? But these folk, they would they, they knew God, but the Bible said they didn't glorify him as God. And so as a result, God gave them over to, gave them up, up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to what? Dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth. Who changed. And we were talking about this earlier. Who changed the truth of God. Into a lie. See. If God says homosexuals going to hell. They were saying homosexuals don't go to hell. And it's not a sin. Mm -hmm. That's what they were saying. Mm -hmm. See. But again. This is what happens. When man believes that he has more authority and he's more important than God. Yes. Again, when I say about false Christ, false prophet, and people who stand up in positions of authority in the church, but they don't tell you what God says, they tell you what they want you to hear mm -hmm. and stuff. And when they do that stuff, you know, they're saying, you know, we don't believe what God said. If you believe what God says, then you're gonna do what God says. And you're not going to try to change it. You're not going to try to add or take away from it. You know, as I said, you've already been warned about that. For this cause, God, verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meek. Now, the thing is that they were doing shameful stuff, knowing the penalty of what they were doing, and knowing that it was due them. Yes. But they still did it anyway. Mm -hmm. See? Like today. The Bible says men with men, homosexuality. Right. Women with women, homosexuality. <laughs> See? <clears throat> and the thing is, is that nobody wants to call that mess sin, but that is sin gone mad. Yep. See? And God wasn't pleased with it. Mm -mm. Verse 28. And even as they and even as they did not like to, re, to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See? To do those things that were not convenient or not fitting and stuff. God gave them over to that. And the thing that people need to realize, he's doing it still today. Yes. That's why these, these homosexuals are so vile. We're going to see in a minute everything that God told, turned them over to. 
everything that they turned that he turned them over to. And I'm telling you, you know, when I read it in the, out of the scripture, that is exactly what God gave them over to. See, the things that I'm going to mention or, or, or read that God said. He says, but in verse 29, being, keyword, filled. Mm -hmm. Filled. What do you do with a, with a glass if you want some water? Fill it up. Yeah. You fill it up. Yeah. You fill it. You put something in it and stuff. And God put this in them. With all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedience to parents, without uh, understanding, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, um, implacable, that, that means unforgiving, who knowing the truth of the judgment of God, now listen to this last verse in this chapter, verse 32, who knowing the judgment of God, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. That's what it See? is today. Exactly. They do it themselves, and man, they push on these other people <coughs> to do the same thing. With like all this transgender crap and all of this uh, chip, uh, 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 gender, uh, what is it they call? Grooming these kids and this kind of gender stuff. You know, and, and, and stuff. And all of this is sexual perversion. Now think about what I just said, what God turned them over to. He gave them over, not only, but he filled them, you know, with wickedness, with fornication, with um, maliciousness, with murder, and all of these things. And, and not only that, the stuff that they were back there doing. Men with men, women with women, lusting after strange flesh. It's what, it, what it's called in one scripture. Now I want you to think about something. You all know we got all of this transgender crap going on. We got all of this stupid going on with sexual perversion and stuff. And we got men running around here just because they put some makeup on and all of this going to call themselves a woman. He ain't no woman. That's right. He ain't no woman. And stuff. God didn't make but two genders, male and female. Right. There is no such thing as transgender. You know, that is called stupid. Yes. It's what it is. And not only that, you know, think about how deranged in mind people have to be to think that, oh, well, I'm a bone a man, but I'm really a woman. That's mental derangement, is what that is. That's mental illness. Any fool who think that they can have a baby as a man, that's a nut. Is what that is. Amen. That's yeah. a nut. Right. That is some of the dumbest, most crazy, the stupid stuff I've ever heard in my life. Amen. It's stuff. Yes. Because God says no. Jesus says no. Right. Jesus said, for this reason, a man ought to leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Jesus said, father, male, mother, female. That's, right. That's it. That's right. Right. Those are the only Amen. two that you've got. Right. See? And they want to try to gaslight you and try to convince you that God really made a mistake and we know better than God because we don't make mistakes. That's what they're saying. Yeah. That's what they're saying, see? And any of these fools running around here claiming to be saved and have no problem with this perversion, you are a fool and you are definitely not a child of God. Right. See? God is not in to being tolerant of sin. Right. Of any kind. See? He's not interested in that. But you got people claiming to be saved, scared to call sin what it is, especially with this transgender crap. Yes. 
and with the grooming of these children and stuff, and with the trans change and whatever they call this stuff, see? The devil is after people's kids. The devil is at to destroy masculinity in men. Right. Because think about it. Yep. You very seldom hear a woman transitioning over to be a man. See? They just want to be in man's position of authority. It's what they want, see? Yeah. You don't have a, because I'd love to see one of these women call, trying to call themselves a man and go try out for the NFL on the offensive line. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see. What? You want to be so much like a man, prove it. Amen. I see that. See, prove it. No, you want to be selected. It's like I said a few years ago or whatever. You're one of those uh, 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 women that wants to be a man, but you want to be on the football team, but you don't want to get down in the trenches, you know, with the big boys and stuff. All you want to do is you want to punt. I want to be a punter. Can I be a punter? No, no, no. We're trying you out a linebacker. No, no, no. I, I don't want to be linebacker. I want to punt. I want to punt. No, nope, you either try on linebacker or you can go turn your equipment in. See? All right. It's stuff. See? See, they just see all of this stuff is a game to the devil. Mm -hmm. All this thing, I mean, I can see the devil busting guts left and right 24 7 because we have one of the stupidest, dumbest governments ever. Amen. Ever. Amen. And the whole thing about what they're doing is being controlled by the spirit of the devil. Right. Amen. Just as the devil controlled everything and everybody in the days of Noah. It ain't changed today. He was just waiting to get some fool in office that would allow him to do the stuff that he's doing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, See? All of this stuff is spiritual. Right. It's spiritual and people don't want to recognize that spiritual and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it is spiritual. When the Bible talks about in John 10.10, 10, it says that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that's what, and, and, and Jesus is talking, they're talking about the devil. Yeah, See, right. he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Tell me that ain't what we got going on in our country right, right now. So we, got it. We, got it. we got that going on in our country to kill, to steal, and to destroy. See, yeah. and that's what they're trying to do to this country, all at the bidding of the devil. Yep. See, yeah, right that's what they're doing. Yeah. And you got those folk who call themselves saved, so scared to speak out, yep. mm -hmm. so scared to call it what it is. See. And I've been saying for a long time, man, I'm telling you. These men running around here talking about they're, they're men of God and all this stuff. I ain't found one that's got a backbone yet. Not one. You ain't going to hear them talking about this stuff in church. Because nope. no. they probably got somebody in their family that's one of these clowns. Yep. And they ain't going to be dealing with that sin. See? Revelation. God says you deal with all of it. That's right. Yeah. You preach the whole gospel. That's right. what God said. You don't avoid preaching against a certain sin in order to allow another person to remain in that sin. Right. Right. See? right. Yes. Until they realize and know that it's a sin and stuff, they have the opportunity to make a choice then. Yep. Mm -hmm. See? But if you keep placating and you keep pacifying that sin or whatever, they will never ever repent of it. Right. See? Fearful. It's a shame that these guys call themselves, a lot of them call themselves a pastor. See? God said a long time ago in Ephesians, there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God of all. See? One God and Father of all and stuff. Right. See? So why are we running around here trying to create denominations? Why are we trying to run, why are people running around here creating their own doctrines, their own churches, their own traditions and stuff? When God says there's only one. Right. And see, this is what happens when they do this stuff. Now you got some of the Methodist churches want to leave the Methodist organization because of homosexuality or same-sex marriage or something to do with homosexuality. Right. Why aren't you preaching against that in the very beginning? Fearful. Why don't you understand that God commands that if you preach the gospel, that's a sin. Right. Amen. And it's not a sin that you coddle or that you pet. It's a sin that you rebuke and that you call out. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. I don't understand that, man. 
We got a bunch of clowns that do not want to deal with the sin. Because if the preacher had dealt with the sin in the church, and I don't care if it's a Methodist church, a Baptist church, or whatever, God commands, if you say that you've been called by God, then you need to preach what God tells you to right. preach and what God has given you in this Amen. Bible to preach. Right. Right. You don't get to pick and choose what you're right. going to preach on and stuff. I don't get to pick and choose what I'm going to live by, you know, if I say that I'm a child of God. Right. I must live by every word of God. That's right. I must preach the gospel as I've been commanded to. And to preach the gospel means you preach all of this. That's right. You don't leave any of it out whatsoever. But there are a bunch of these guys that do. There are a bunch of them that really do. Now, I'm going to take a couple bits and I want to just share with you some things that God had to say about his punishment of these sins. First of all, he says in Hosea chapter 4, we can run over there real quick. See, because people don't think God punishes sin. They really don't think he does. In Hosea chapter 4, in verse 6, the Bible says, My people are destroyed. My people are destroyed. And why are they destroyed? For lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. So God is saying the very thing that would give you life and get you back on the right track and help you to have an understanding of who I am and what I command and what I expect, he says you reject it. They're destroyed because they do not want to hear what God has to say. They don't want anything to do with the truth. You reject my truth. And God says because of that. I will also reject you. What did he say? There are a lot of people being rejected. Or have been rejected by God. Because see when you reject the knowledge of God. Which means literally you're rejecting the word of God. And if you're rejecting the word of God. You're rejecting Jesus. That's right. And because of you rejecting him, God says, I'm going to reject you. See? Because God has a command to where he expects us to be in agreement with his word, to live by his word, to have faith and to have fellowship in him. See? But yet we don't want that because, you know, this evil life or this sinful life that I'm living, I kind of like it. So I don't want to hear what God has to say. And then he says, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also will forget your children. Mm -hmm. See, parents don't realize that the life that they live, how God ties the lives of their children to them. Mm -hmm. See, because he's commanded parents to raise your children and to train your children in the things of God and that you remind them and you read them, uh, uh, remind them and read the scripture to them, you know, and stuff so they will know who God is. Right. See? And so when the parents are disobedient, it has a direct effect on the children. Yeah, yeah. A direct effect on the children. Now over in Psalm 81, and, and what I want us to take with us that with that particular scripture is, is, is that God said, I'll forget you. He says, I'll forget you. He said, because you rejected my truth, you rejected me. If you reject my, my knowledge, you've rejected me. And he said, because of that, I'm rejecting you. So what does that mean? You can pray to God all you want to. 
when you're living in that, he ain't hearing what you got to say. You know, he's not hearing anything that you have to say. So in Psalm 81, verse 11, I'm going to read it off my sheet, but I just read it out the Bible. Psalm 81 and verse 11. The Bible says, let's go up to verse 8. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Amen. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts, Look up to their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own okay. counsels. Oh, that my people had here had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in their ways. And because they wouldn't receive what God had to say, what did He say? He did. I gave them up mm -hmm. to do their own heart's lust. He gave them over to their lust. You see, because of their disobedience. See, you can't like not obey God and not expect consequences. Right. Right. Disobedience not only requires consequences, it commands consequences yes. because God had already put them in place mm -hmm. in his scripture. They were already in the word of God. You know that if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen mm -hmm. and stuff. So Proverbs 1. Verse 24. Okay, it says, Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But you have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. These, these folks are still rebellious. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when you fear, when your fear comes. See? When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For, for that they, what? Hated. Hated. They, they hated to see God coming. Because they knew what he was going to say. And they didn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. And I believe that's what we got going on today. There's no fear of the Lord. See? Mm -hmm. Because if you love God, then you want his knowledge. But as a result of your rebe or rebuking or resisting God, he says, I'm not hearing nothing that you have to say. He says... They did would none of my counsel. They listen to what he said. They despised my reproof. All my reproof. All my reproof. Therefore, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Amen. You know, it's amazing how God, we get, God gives us his promises and yet he's ignored. When God gives us warnings about various things and, and the examples that he's given us so far about people rejecting him and not hearing him and stuff and God punishes them or allows them to walk in their sin, you know, without him 
you know, having to do anything, see, because they make their choice. And see, and that's the thing in our own personal lives. You know, we don't have anybody to blame for anything in our lives other than ourselves. Amen. You know, we don't get to point at somebody else. Made for. We don't, <laughs> you don't get to point at somebody else and stuff. Amen. Because, see, the thing is that either you believe that God is true to his word or, or you don't. don't. That's right. Amen. And when you are not, God is left with nothing to do but let you have what you want. Mm -hmm. Because you've indicated to him by not hearing him, by rejecting him, that I really don't want to have nothing to do with you, see. Because in one, in one of those scriptures, he said they despised basically his chastisement. They despised it, see. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to hear God, you know. And when they didn't want to hear God, they could, oh man, he calmed down on cloud nine. He said, I don't want to hear, let's go hide somewhere. You know, like sometimes you see people that you know and they and they know who you are, what you stand for, what you yeah. believe, and they see you coming and then, <laughs> where, where, where's that owl at? Where, where's that owl and I gotta find an owl. They be trying to shoot down an owl because they do not want to have to confront you. See, and it's not so much confronting you as it is the fact that they know who you are. They know you love God. They know you're going to stand up for the truth. And they also know that at every opportunity, you're going to witness to somebody if you can, mm -hmm. if you have the opportunity. So, but they don't want to have anything to do with that. So let's see, where did I stop? Yeah. Verse 31, they, shoot, they shall eat, the, eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet uh, from the fear of evil. I had read all of that. Yeah. Um, there's just a couple of more that I want to I want to uh, want to read. Uh, go over to Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2. Can I just ask you to? Sure. Some of these verses you are reading to me have been drawing my face about the chemo to the gay thing. Mm -hmm. But these are some of these verses, especially Romans 1 and Romans first chapter mm -hmm. that's where God says it's okay for you to be, you can be gay and do that mm -hmm. and he gave me permission that means you're going to go to hell mm -hmm. that's, that's, the, the devil's talking and the other ones I'm marking it here in Rome I mean you know I've heard that people study that he said you can do it and it's okay mm -hmm. that's they, he they means they he's going to judge that. Right. I mean, you know, well, the thing about it is, they, you know, with God is <laughs> mentioning that in that scripture. He's mentioning the homosexuality, among other things. You know, he's mentioning that because he was angry about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and they were taking something holy and making it what they wanted it to be and making it say what they wanted it to say. That's why the devil is the father of lies. He knows how to manipulate lies. And not only that, he knows how to manipulate people that have no standing with God. He knows how to, how, to, how, to, how, to, how to deal with those unsaved people or those people that, you know, are wavering in doubt. They don't really know what they believe. He knows how to manipulate those people. Now, understand something about people and their sin. I don't care what the sin is. It doesn't just have to be homosexuality. It could be any other sin. Now, if they like that sin, they're going to defend that sin. Right. It doesn't matter who they are. Yeah, they use that for like drinking and stuff. Yeah, but, but, right there, you know, but they're not going to understand it. As I said earlier, yeah, the no devil way. has blinded their mind. See, as I said earlier also, when you have made up in your mind that you're going to do something and that you like doing it and stuff, anything that, that poses any kind of opposition to that, you're not going to think about it. You're going to defend what you believe and what you're doing, you know, and you're not going to think about that other, you know. You know the old saying that says, out of sight, out of mind and mm -hmm. stuff? 
that's the that's the approach that a lot of people take when they don't want to hear something about what they're doing that it's not right and especially from somebody that says it's a sin mm -hmm. see I mean, they even get offended when a person may not even be a, a sinner, but yet their morality says that's a sin. They don't want to hear them either, you know, but they definitely don't want to hear when you start bringing up the scripture and stuff. See, because that other person may just have an opinion that don't have a relationship with God. You got truth and you got proof that says it is. See, so they, they definitely don't want to hear that. They definitely don't want to hear that. Well, they're, they're, I, I, that's you're right. They're religious. They're well, see, the thing is, is, is that is, is, you know, Perfect. and it's really not that they're religious. You know, that's a term well, I mean, yeah. for the world. But the thing is, is that they're just unsaved. Yeah. They're sinners. And the thing about a sinner, a sinner is going to do what they like doing, which is to sin, regardless of what the sin is. I just want to point out. You know, I told you that there was. I yeah, but. That's what the devil does. What did the devil tell Eve in the Garden of Eve? You know, Eve told him, said, look, God says if we eat of this tree, he said, God said that we're going to surely die. What did the first thing out the devil's mouth? You shall not surely die. See? So, I mean, that, see, the thing is that really if we look at, if we just read scripture and really just take time to see what it's saying and understand what it's saying, there are questions that will be answered without even having to be asked yeah. in this scripture. Yeah. It's already I mean, in the Bible because it's already been given to us. Okay, in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We got people like that right now. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness or deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, because they didn't have a love of God's word, a love of the truth, for this cause, God shall and shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Amen. Think about it. God sent them. He just didn't send them delusion. The Bible says he sent them strong delusion to there was no possible way they were not going to believe the lie. They were going to believe that lie. See? Because God had sent them such strong delusion. See? And because this is how God feels about his word. God says that my word is holy. Mm -hmm. My word is truth. Right. My word will lead you, will teach you, and guide you, you know, to obey this same truth. See? My word is what keeps you and separates you from someone who does not know me. Right. See? Right. You know me. You should love me. And if you do, you will keep my commandments. But when people have pleasure in unrighteousness, God's word is the last thing they're going to be thinking about. That's true. That's right. They're not going to be thinking about it at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. When God turns you over to a strong delusion, that means that whatever it is that you're doing, you continue to look for ways to make it even more truthful to you or more righteous to you to continue to do that. 
You're not looking for ways out. You're not looking to uh, discredit what you're doing, you know, even though God says it's sin because the truth that I've shown you has revealed your sin to you, but yet because you don't love the truth, which means you don't know the truth, you know, you find pleasure in the sin that you're committing. And he says, because you want that, remember, choose you this day whom you're going to serve by rejecting the commands of God and the instruction of God by the word, then you're rejecting everything. And so God says, I'm going to let you have that. Right. That's what you want, see? Because what did Jesus say? You will know them by their fruit. However a person is living and you apply it to what the Bible says, it will tell you very quickly whether that person is of God or whether that person is of the devil. Amen. See? Right. Amen. Yeah. Because they're going to be doing various things that's going to reveal that to you as to who they really are and what they really believe and what they're standing for. Right. See, That's why, you know, when God tells us, walk in the light as he is in the light. If you say that you're in him, in, in, in Colossians 2, you need to live as he lived and walk as he walked. You keep your heart and your mind stayed upon the Lord. You seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Whatever God commands you to do, do it without murmuring and complaining and thank God that he chose you to do it. Amen. See? Amen. That's the way you ought to be you're approaching anything that God, you know, asks you to do. Look, man, if God asks you to do I mean, ask you to do something. Ain't no telling how many other people he went to before. And they said no. And before he could get out of his mouth, I'd do it. See? When I got saved before the person asked me to raise my hand, back then it was like, raise your hand. It wasn't like just flat out repent or whatever, see? But when he said, raise your hand, my hand was up before he got it out of his mouth. Because I know it was already in my heart. I was getting saved that night. I don't care, you know, if it stormed for 39 days straight. Oh, see? Wow. I'm getting saved because that was in my heart was to be saved. Mm -hmm. See, I knew that I was missing something, but I didn't know what it was. But the minute that I repented of my sin, you know, I still didn't know what it was, but I knew that I was different. Mm -hmm. I knew that I was changed. I knew something happened. I didn't know what it was. But the thing was is that the Holy Spirit immediately began to minister to me. Yes. You know, God, when you get saved, God gives you peace. That surpasses all understanding. You ain't got that no more. See, you don't have that worry and all this stuff anymore. See, and God proves to you, if you will trust him, that I would do everything that I said that I would do. That's see, right. that's why you have to have faith. You know, and the Bible says you can't say I don't have faith because the Bible says God has given you the measure of faith. See? You know, I mean, and he even says, look, the faith that I've given you, it could be just as small as a mustard seed. He said, but if you plant it right and you water it right, it will grow right. Yeah, See? Right. That's what will happen. See? Oh, yeah. We serve yeah. a good and a mighty God and Father. See? Yes. And the that. thing I want you guys to concentrate on and, uh, and pray that God will help you to do is see God as your Father. Mm -hmm. right. Treat Him as your Father. Right. Don't look at Him as some being, you know, I hate it when people say some higher power. I just want to just punch somebody, you know, <laughs> higher power. No, there ain't one higher power, so to speak, that matters, and that's God. And he's not a higher power. He's God. He's my father. He's my God and my father. He's my Lord and my Savior, my healer, my deliverer. He is my everything. He's special to me. He's not just some higher power. When you say some higher power, you can throw Herr Christian and all other kind of demons and devils in that. <laughs> but the Bible says about God, what? He's God all by himself. Yeah. Ain't nobody but him. Right. He's the only God that there is. So he ain't some higher power, see? And you know why people say some higher power? Because they don't want to say God. See? Saying a higher power and identifying God as God they don't want that. Now, believe it, don't have any problem calling God God and Father, whatever. But people that ain't saved, mm -mm, they don't like to call him God, see. You know, and if they have to choose between saying God or Jesus, they're going to say God. Yes. They will. They ain't going to say Jesus. I have no idea. But I know all through my life, I never heard people, even before, I, you know, even when I wasn't saved, I hardly ever heard anybody say Jesus. I mean, hardly ever. Mm -mm. You know, but they would say God. But see, the thing about it is, you know, Jesus said, if you have God, then you have me. Mm -hmm. If you have me, 
Then you have my father, see? Mm -hmm. And when people say God, they ain't identifying Jesus whatsoever, see? When you say Jesus, that's a whole nother level. No, see? It's a whole nother level when you say Jesus, see? You know, people don't, you know, even when I, this place I used to work at years ago, you know, everybody talked about God, God, God. But when you start talking about Jesus, everybody just kind of paused. <laughs> and I'm going, what's up with that? You know? <laughs> I'm saying, you say Jesus, it's, it's, it's like you cuss somebody out. Because when you say that, that's when they really start running. You say God, they can tolerate that. But a, a believer ain't going to be ain't gonna be talking about God without talking about Jesus. Amen. You know, they're both one and the same. And they're inseparable. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I and my Father, we are one. Yeah. We're one. So, well, anyway, I hope y'all learned something. Yeah. And, uh, I did, but but that you know that we understand though, in closing that we understand, you know that there are people that don't love God. Yeah. There are people that do not like God and they do not like you because of God and stuff. But the thing is, is that you know we cannot be ashamed of who we are. We cannot be intimidated because of who we are. You know. The Bible says that we're to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have nothing to be ashamed of. As a matter of fact, we have everything and every uh, everything to be uh, proud for yeah. because of our love and our relationship with God. You know, and that is something that, you know, that we ought to be. And when I say proud, I mean just glad to be able to share, you know, I mean, what true love really is, what true peace with really is. What true relationship really is and really are with the Lord and stuff. Mm -hmm. People don't, um, people, most people have never seen somebody that really lives the life of a believer. Mm -hmm. They're very seldom because, you know, and the reason is because they've been told so many different things. When you've got so many different uh, denominations and different churches and all, you got just that many different doctrines. See? And the only doctrine that matters is the doctrine of Jesus. That's right. Live as he lived. Walk as he walked. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.